Hello everyone, uh, Dave Armet with 3 Act Slide here and pretty excited to be with Jonah Bayless of A1 Pitching Academy in Adams, Massachusetts. Um, Jonah uh, recently started using the 3 Act Slide within his uh, training facility here. Um, so we're excited to sort of just see what the mind of a uh, former Major League pitcher uh, who's currently working with a lot of young pitchers, uh, you know, what his mind has been able to uh, do with the 3 Act Slide in terms of working it into uh, his pitching routines. Um, yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been great for us. Um, I loved it. I when I played, I played for about ten professional seasons, and uh, when I played, I was big into slide board. I was a hockey player in high school, so that kind of naturally carried over for me. And the I always did the slide board, and what happened was I loved it for its lateral lateral aspects, um, but there was nothing rotational about it. Uh, so you know, I, I got great work, and, and, I, and I saw the value in it. And I thought the athleticism that it can develop was exceptional. Um, however, as most of us know, uh, baseball is extremely rotational. And, uh, and there was no, like I said, there, there was no rotational aspect to it. I mean, you could kind of, you could take an old slide, this is my own homemade one, but you could take an old slide board and sort of turn the, the, uh, the ends in a little bit to create a little bit of, of rotational aspect to it. But um, there's nothing to the point where if you think about a pitching mechanic when I'm, when I'm fully opening up the hips here and, and getting that external rotation on that back leg, there was nothing that could really create that. So, um, you know, when I when I heard that when I heard that you guys were doing this and had created this thing, I you know I, I started salivating because I was like, it this spoke is, to you. Huh? <laughs> I was like, this is what I've been waiting for. No, that's awesome. Uh, and again, you just sort of uh, verbalized our exact reason for wanting to. To, uh, to create the design the way it was. It's just all so much sports is about rotation and the power that rotation can create. So, uh, yeah, we're excited to see uh, what you can come up with uh, specific to pitching. And I know you've been working uh, with your uh, hitters as well. So, uh, so the reason that I love slide boards, uh, a, a, because I played hockey in high school, but uh, I, just, I think they're, just, they're such an exceptional athletic development tool for a number of reasons. Um, you know, if we take the traditional straight slide board, even the straight slide board still, you're as you move side to side, you know, you're staying within your feet. You're forced to keep your center of gravity and, and all your weight distribution within your feet here, um, kind of keeping your knees inside your ankles to stay athletic. Once they get outside, you kind of roll over the edge, and that's a good, it's a good indication that you're not staying athletic in your movements. Um, but then we add the 3X slide, and now we can add a rotational component to it, which is, in my book, it's huge. Like I said in the introduction, you know, the, the lateral slide board was great, and I, and I think it's a vastly overlooked tool. Um, but this just opened up a whole new door to creating a rotational component to it. Because I can speak from experience uh, towards the end of my career as I got a little older. Um, I used to get a little bit rickety in this back loop here from the, from the rotation open right there, uh, trying to create power through that back loop. And uh, the using the three-act slide here as a, as a rotational source right there, getting through that movement um, as, a, as a light warm-up, as, as an exercise to, to mix in um, towards the end of a leg workout or anything, has been phenomenal in my own uh, endeavors. And I think some of my hitting specific stuff, I like to do uh, basically kind of simulate a, a load up of, of a swing uh, with a bit of an open stance. But the reason I go with the open stance is because it promotes more of a direct stride at the quote unquote pitcher. So if we envision that if the pitcher's down this way, you know, I can do it with a bat in my hand if I need to. Um, but I'm going to get here and I'm going to push back to that back block here and then sort of stride in. And I'm just, all I'm really focused on here is just kind of warming up that back leg, getting it to drive directly into my target, I'm not really doing any swings or anything, I'm just kind of warming up the lower half, and I'll have hitters come in and do, I don't know, 10 of these or so uh, before we start doing T work and stuff like that. Um, as they get loose with that, you can kind of move, move the blocks in a little bit and start to make it more and more uh, realistic, maybe, if you will. Um, a little bit less movement, more emphasis on what your hands are doing as you swing. And then uh, one, uh, one thing I've had a, a bit of success with, with with some of the guys is actually making this short enough to where they can stride and 
letting them load up and actually take a dry swing with a bat. Um, I don't have one in my hands now, but, but you can load up and then get through, get through right there. Uh, I found that kind of one of the really neat things that it does, <laughs> no, that's okay, I'm going to help. Yeah, I'll end up breaking something. Um, I found one of, the, one of the unique things that it does uh, when you swing, when you actually do end up taking a swing on, on, the, on the board, is that it will sort of immediately let you know whether or not your power generation is being produced straight directionally into the, towards the pitcher, or if you're wasting any rotationally. Uh, so in other words, if I can explain that real quick, if you'll see a lot of young guys get up here, when they go to swing, their back foot is going to kick out that way because they're trying to create the rotation through that back foot and not driving into the swing, sort of not pushing that back hip through, trying to sort of pull it through. Uh, and it'll, it'll let you know that immediately because you will either be standing or not standing. Um, so I do that with my hitters. Um, we've also even just done simple warm-ups. It doesn't have to be an open stance, you can even just sort of stay here and just kind of float up and get that back leg warmed up a little bit, float up, drive into it. Um, I've used it for uh, getting loaded up on that back leg. I've, I've spread guys out really wide and we've done a drill where we just sort of push off here, get onto that back leg and get off of it. Get on, get off. Um, kind of the wider it is, the, the more it forces you to really to push into, if I do it on dry ground, in a swing, to push into that back leg to load it up and then kind of use it like a spring to, to All right, so my distances off. are gonna be off a little bit because I just kind of set this up on a whim here, but um, basically we'll be doing towel drills with this sometimes on occasion. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of get spread out into our position. And just like I was mentioning with the hitting aspect, it's going to allow you to feel immediately whether or not your power momentum and your balance is staying sort of right within your feet and, and not side to side as you go to swing and hit the, the pad. If you aren't pushing directly into your throw, again, just like with the hitting, you're going to start spinning out that way and it's gonna let you know immediately. So we'll just kind of spread out right through here, get a couple throws in. And again, it's just kind of an instant feedback system that lets some of my younger pitchers know where their balance is and where their power is uh, being generated from and what direction it's going in. So to build off uh, the towel drill, to take it a step further, what you can do, especially with younger kids, is they want to expand through their comfort zone. You want to start them on a drill that they're comfortable with so they can succeed at it. Um, you're just going to start them off a little bit shorter and that's going to require a little bit less hip movement in the pattern. So it's going to allow me to stay right through here. This, this would have to be pulled in a little bit closer for most kids. But it's going to allow me to stay kind of in my feet a little bit easier, over my feet, I should say. And then as I get comfortable with that, the more I spread my feet out, the more it's going to force me to use my hips to get opened up to my target. If I go here, you'll notice now in order to get that full rotation, now I've really got to get through my hips all the way through, and the more we get those hips rotating around, the more, um, the harder it becomes to stay balanced, and the, and the more tendency we have to start want to create rotational power with that back leg as opposed to pushing straight forward. Um, so you can, you can, you can, that's a big reach. Yeah. You can, uh, if obviously if they're comfortable, you can take it even a step further and, and really stretch them out. Um, they're going to need some pretty good flexibility for it. But, uh, like I said, the wider you get in your stance here, the more it's going to force you to get these hips all the way through the throw because I can no longer reach my pad without getting my hips all the way through. Whereas when I'm standing more upright, I can kind of cheat a little bit and keep my hips here and still reach the pad. So spreading out as they get comfortable with it will challenge them to use that back foot and stay more directional with the power. For pitching specifically was the one that 
drew me the most because it really emphasizes that load from here to opening up there.